All right, I'm back. Next up is the uh, engine nacelle. Now I have the cowling taken off of here so that you can see the motor mounted to the birch uh, plywood in there. And I mean, it's held on by four locking nuts on the back so they're not the they're not going to come out and uh, it's got allen head bolts I think they're 440s so they're going to stay in there just fine they're not going to go anywhere the uh, door is actuated by an arm on the retract so I want to show you that you can see that this little arm here spins it's got a little screw through the center of it and you can spin it and what that does is it rolls along the inside of the door to allow it to open and close again no extra servo no ridiculous rigging none of that crap good simple fun you know um, it's not exactly scale but that's okay I you know I don't mind it I will sacrifice a little scale um, integrity for or a little scale look for um, functionality reliability things like that are just as important in a plane as scale looks so I like it and I think for the most part the general public y'all will like it and, uh, something else I want to show foam or not foam they're rubber wheels they're spongy and you know, they feel like low bounce wheels. But on top of that, Oleo struts. So that's a big plus. The struts go down a lot further than that. I'm not really pushing my luck with them. Uh, so, anyway, there's that. And close that up. Set it aside. Next up, I'm going to show you the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator. See how flat that is? It's not all curved like some of the other B25s on the market. Why that is, is because of this carbon rod that they put in there. It keeps it good, strong. There's virtually no flex to it whatsoever. Uh, very impressed with this. Uh, it's hollowed out in here. The tail of the B25 is hollowed out. They have the wires pre-ran. Everything is numbered, so you just plug it into the number and you go. You're done. It's it's very simple. Uh, it's a nice tight fit on the tail. Uh, one, uh, you know, it'd be nice if it screwed down. Another piece that you can modularly pull off just in case, but not necessary. You know, this is one that I could probably break down enough and drive with my top down on my car and still get to the airfield win with. Uh, another aspect that I think is really great in scale is we have the trim tabs and where the control wires come out at as well as we have these little notches cut to simulate the real hinges on the plane. Now it's just stamped foam, you know, it just it's creased just like a park zone plane or any of those other planes on the market, but they have taken the time to put in a scale detail that, I mean, I really like. I, I love it. You know, the panel lines aren't super deep. They're they're pretty shallow. Um, it just it looks good. It really does. Uh, I'm thoroughly impressed with it. Um, one other thing to show you: the uh, piece that controls the elevator. This little plastic piece here. If you notice, there it looks like a little silver U. That's the metal rod that runs from here to over here. It's one piece and it's put in here and it's glued down and it's bolted down and it controls the elevator. Very solid design. You don't have to worry about offsetting on the elevator. Very rigid. I love it. Looks great. Uh, one final piece to go over is the uh, the vertical stabilizers and rudder. Love how much surface area we have moving here lots and lots of surface area and I love how they've again incorporated a very scaled look to the hinging it's crimped here and it's crimped foam here everything else moves freely looks looks very realistic I love it um, there's a little bit of restriction in deflection on this side versus that side and you can probably dremel out this bottom hole bottom two holes if you need to 
and you can get full deflection out of it coming in. It's probably what I want to do just so that I have good turning, good rudder authority. Love having rudder authority. I love coordinated turns. A lot of the other B25s on the market have a very small rudder surface and this one has a huge surface and I think it's just beautiful. Um, let's see. The props are 12 inch props. They will need to be built. Uh, it's pretty cut and dry, nothing to fuss about. I think they're, you know, these are pretty common with uh, other planes like I think, um, well, the other B-25s come this way. Or no, no they don't. The uh, P-38s come this way. And uh, they're very much like uh, the props that Hobby Lobby used to carry. I don't know if they still carry them, but there's a tab on the end and you can probably trim that off and make it a variable pitch prop. Hey, sweetie. If you're so inclined, I'm not. I'm going to let it be That's static it. and I'm going to go with it the way it is. Um, the pilots in this are kind of hokey. Um, I don't mind. You got one guy and one gal in there. Not what you would see in World War II, at least not customarily. But um, hey, yeah. you got pilots. It's all right, and they're not all the same pilot. You know, you don't have the same goofy grin on all of them from beginning to end. Um, looks good. I don't mind it. I think it's going to look great in the air. Really be the part. The uh, last, last thing I want to cover, and I was really shocked by this, are the guns. The guns have a little point on the end of them that allow you to poke them into the foam easily. And what I also want to point out is it's not just a plastic stick. It has the holes drilled in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. It has the holes drilled in there and it has a beveled edge with flash guard on there. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it. You can see the holes really good in that aspect. But now you can see the, the openings. So you got your, your flash guard on there to keep the, the muzzle um, the flames, I guess. I think there's a heat issue with it, or it's a shield of sorts. Not really sure of the technical term. Don't hold me to it. But um, there, you know, I've never seen guns detailed out like this before, so it looks great. Uh, other than that, man, I just really impressed with the plane. Uh, one other thing I do want to recommend: I got permission from the manufacturer to mention this. The uh, all the servos are your typical nine gram servos. They put out about 16 to 18 ounces of torque, which if anybody's flying big planes knows one servo hefting around a five pound, five pound plane just isn't going to cut it. So like I said, I got permission I from the manufacturer to swap it out with an HS82MG. This servo's putting out 38.88 ounces from the uh, uh, from 4.8 volts. So it should be more than enough to carry this plane up and down. And uh, I'm really looking forward to getting her built. So I guess that's about it, guys. Uh, that's, that's the uh, overview of the plane as it is out of the box. Mm -hmm. We'll be building it over the next couple days. So I hope you follow along and you enjoy the uh, build process as I am. And uh, I'll see you on the, see you on the threads.